Welcome to the show, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I will be with you for the rest of the week. Uh, you can send me an email at jacob at tfnn.com. The number is 877-927-6648. If you want to talk to me, that's all right with me. Taking a look at the markets right now, we're kind of down a little bit. Uh, ES Mini down about 1.29%, Russell down about 2%, and Q down 1.39%. YM down about 0.89 percent. The gold contract we're trading at 1960, uh, really 1962. Uh, so some pretty fantastic movement for it today um, on some pretty substantial volume as well. So that's good for all the gold holders out there. I was reading an article that Costco, I guess they sell little gold bars, and uh, they've been selling out of them um, pretty quickly. If you have, I guess, the more expensive Costco card, you get two percent back on purchases. So like basically getting this gold for kind of a 2% uh, discount, which is pretty neat. Silver trading at 22.96. Taking a look, not the same amount of, uh, not the exact same amount of motion as gold has, but on some pretty significant volume on the upside anyway. Looking at a $25 price target for gold. Uh, looking at copper, 358 on the contract. And of course, crude oil futures trading at 87.29. And this has really been what we've been seeing for the past uh, month essentially, right? In between this 81 to the 90 area. And everything is uh, still moving along with the uh, conflicts around the world. Uh, there is some talk that America might lift some of the embargoes on Venezuelan oil since they are promising to have a democratic election the next cycle. Uh, if that's true, that will alleviate some of the pressure uh, in the gold market, excuse me, in the, uh, in the oil market. And that'll just be interesting from a uh, geopolitical stance as well. Uh, bonds trading down a little bit today. Tesla down about 5%. We can look a little bit more into that as we're going. Um, I still... The, the people who love Tesla are so dedicated to it that I, I do think we'll see this as an, a buying opportunity. Um, they are very well influenced online by um, all the other you know holders of Tesla and, and, and probably... Um, some more institutional investors online as well. Still dynamics, we're trading down pretty hard today. Now we're at 102.99, reaching that $100 uh, target. We've been trading in, the, like I've said, 100 and 110, this range, uh, for quite a while, as you can see. Cracked down out of it with volume, came back up to test that high again of the 110, um, and we're on the way back down to 100. So we'll take a look to see how that goes in the coming days. Uh, the dollar is staying um, pretty consistent here. And consolidating about this 106.59 area. Um, obviously, we have some traversal a little bit down, but we're not even getting close to cracking um, 105 um, and really, you know, 104. We, we want it to move down so the rest of the market can do a bit better. But again, you know, regarding gold and this kind of traditional um, kind of inverse relation these two have, um, gold's still doing pretty well today. QQQ is trading 363.55. Google 139.35, Meta at 318.22, Disney back down at 84.83, and Apple at 176.19. We'll take a look. We were talking a little bit yesterday um, about NVIDIA. Um, their stock was losing some ground because the U.S. had essentially closed a loophole um, in selling some of their chips to China. What had happened is they essentially, I guess, rebranded the chips, uh, were able to sell them to China. This was a loophole. Uh, they found last November um, when this kind of like quote unquote chip war started. Um, that's now closing, and that's a pretty large driver of revenue um, for Nvidia. The reason why the U.S. government's doing that is because it might indirectly um, benefit the Chinese uh, military. ASML is responsible for the lithography uh, devices that make chips, um, and they basically kind of like hold the key to all of this. Now they did beat expectations, uh, but their forecast was not so great. Um, so they earned the equivalent of about five twenty three dollars a share on sales of $7.26, uh, excuse me, $7.26 billion in the September quarter. ASML reports financial results, obviously, in euros. Uh, the analysts uh, polled ASML earnings about four ninety two dollars a share on sales of $7.19 billion. In the years prior, um, obviously, has gone up. It was four twenty dollars a share on sales. 5.66 billion. Um, so essentially, their CEO kind of came out and said 
uh, that they might have flat sales next year. Uh, this is a quote from him. His name is Peter Venink. Uh, the semiconductor industry is uh, currently working through the bottom of the chip cycle, and our customers expect the inflection point to be visible by the end of this year. Uh, customers continue to be uncertain about the shape of the demand recovery in the industry, uh, wherefore, um, uh, excuse me, we therefore expect uh, 2024 to be a transition year. So we can take a look here, losing about um, 5%. Uh, he added, based on our current perspective, we take a more conservative view and expect a revenue number similar to 2023. Uh, but we also look at 2024 as an important year to prepare for the significant growth that we expect for 2025. So on the short term, he's seeing a basically, like I said, a bit of a flattening. Um, but ASML really does uh, just dominate in the lithography market, uh, which will be uh, you know, necessary for chip development going Ford. Second here. We'll take a look to, I want to talk a little bit about Target um, because they've done, you know, they've lost a lot this year. Uh, and the question is, you know, kind of why, right? So we look at, you know, Walmart has gone up quite a bit. Um, I, I think the, basically the consumer is getting tightened a little bit. Um, there's a lot, Target also centers itself around a lot of discretionary spending. And you know, what that means is when you go in, there's a lot of excess stuff to buy. Target is really good when the middle class or, you know, whatever can be considered the middle class is doing well, too. Um, when it's not obviously these cheaper options such as Walmart come about. And Walmart's been really good about kind of consolidating its market lines, um, or excuse me, its product lines. Um, and and uh, they've just been able to hold out uh, a lot better. Of course, a lot of people are trying to say that Target going down uh, had to do with some politics earlier on in the year. Um, now, you know, probably that had maybe a small amount to do on it, but this is uh, kind of a, a larger issue overall uh, with Target and the type of demographic uh, that they seek to kind of cater to um, are getting tightened a little bit. So on the long term, I still think Target is going to kind of be down here. I mean, we're coming up from like, you know, this is a year to date. If we go to the yearly, let's see here. So, I mean, you know, we're trading at, at least in February 181, and we are down at 110 right now. That's a pretty significant uh, downward movement. Folks, stay tuned. Uh, we'll be right back.